Retro Anime. How did we fight it? How does it hold up? Unpacking the hidden and outs of being an old school nerd, and proving that 80s kids can't remember a damn thing right. These are the mindless midlife musings of the anime nerd. Welcome to Mindless Midlife Musings of the Anime Nerd. I'm Rick, and I'm joined by the rest of our panel, Brian, Lynette, Vic, and our special guest, Andrea. How we doing? Hello. Hey, y'all. Hey, everybody. All right. Our celebration of all things Hayao Miyazaki continues as we talk the whore. I mean, or la puta. Wait, no. That's, I mean, Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky is what we're talking about today. It sounds like, it feels like you were, you want to make it seem like it was innocent, but (laughs) I don't believe it. (laughs) So, Laputa, Castle in the Sky, (laughs) known simply as Castle in the Sky in North America, for For obvious reasons, uh, is a 1986 Japanese animated fantasy adventure film written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Um, we are continuing our coverage of Ghibli Fest this year, celebrating all things Miyazaki. So we've decided to uh, talk about this one. Uh, time of release, I think this one's going to be in theaters. Is that the way we timed it? I don't know. Hopefully we timed it right. Uh, anyway, this is the first official Studio Ghibli film. Uh, everything else before that was not meaning uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind and Grave of the Fireflies were not... Well, Grave of the Fireflies wasn't, right? No, no, no. no. They, I believe they were. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind was not a Ghibli film. Technically. Technically. Right. Technically. But right, Grave of the Fireflies would have been because it was released at the same With time as... Neighbor, so, so, yeah. Anyway, so Nausicaa's not. This is the first one. This was released, again, 1986. It was released in the United States in 1989 by Streamline Pictures. Uh, then it was redubbed and released by the Walt Disney Company in, uh, well, it was actually redubbed in 98, but it didn't really make it out until 2003. So the, this whole its story is interesting. All right. There's a lot to talk about with how this was not made per se, but the releases of this, because there's a lot of muddy information about what version you may be watching. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> uh, not that it released, the, not that it had a lot of edited versions per se. The the film itself is pretty much the same universally. The differences are in its audio, which is kind of an interesting thing uh, to break down. So for me, I watched the streamlined dub. Andrea, you watched the Disney dub for this, correct? And I am going to assume. That Vic watched it subtitle because I got a feeling he's a subtitle kind of guy. I don't know. I feel like we've established this <laughs> over the course of the show. It's like you read my mind. <laughs> I mean, I also did have subtitles on mine, right. which did not match. Yeah, that's yeah. So now, <laughs> Brian, you with no shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. No kidding. So now, Brian, uh, did you you caught this what on HBO? Yeah. So I was. That means I did the Disney. Nice, nice. Okay, and Lynette, how did you watch it? I did the Disney sub as well. All right, Disney sub. Fantastic. So here's you where... Did sub? Yeah, she did. So the, the version on HBO, but subbed. So everybody did a different version. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. So um, this is kind of fun. All right. There's a muddy history for the audio for this movie. Uh, the very first dub of Laputa was commissioned by uh, Tokuma Shoten, and it was for international flights. So Streamline Pictures did the dub, just like they did for Kiki, just like they did for, um, what was the other one they did? Uh, they did a few of these. And so Streamline Pictures, so Carl Masick, the head of Streamline, who you may know for Super Dimension Fortress Macross, they're the Robotech localization. He, uh, he wasn't really happy with how it turned out, but... You know, what are you going to say? Called it adequate but clumsy. And his version got released in 89. I think it was. Somewhere around there. After his dub, the Disney deal went through. Disney got to do their version. They got Vanderbeck and Paquin, and they got them to come in and do their dub. 
and they made a decent amount of changes to it. Sort of how like how they did with Kiki, where they changed some dialogue to in their localization, added some lines, added some audio, did a little improv kind of thing. And then they also got the composer back. They brought back Joe Hisaishi, and they had him redo the soundtrack as an orchestral version and had it run a full 90 minutes. The version from the original was electronic synth, kind of like Nausicaa, if you remember that sort of, it was the 80s, you know? Mm -hmm. And and it, it was 30 minutes shorter. So then, so Disney's version had arguably a better score, <laughs> but it was dubbed, and that was a little weird. So then, but like, so Ghibli loved it. Ghibli was like, this soundtrack's great. He said she did an awesome job. But they never released the Japanese version with the soundtrack. They were just happy with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like I said, this is very, it's kind of muddy. So They were happy with it, but not happy enough to redo, re release the video with it. Right, so there are versions of this that have the original Japanese language, the original Japanese audio, and they have the dub on it, but some of the audio has been changed. But the dub version always has the score soundtrack, and the Japanese version has the original synth soundtrack. And then there are versions of this that are dubbed and have the synth soundtrack from the original audio. <laughs> so every one of the it's it's a hot fucking mess, for lack of a better term. I tried to write notes to break it down, and I can't even follow it on my own notes. Did you get beautiful say, mind? It, seriously, yeah, maths. Um, so <laughs> the 2017 version of the Blu-ray released by G Kids has the original Japanese audio. It has the 2010 version of the English dub, with the option of playing it with either the original score or the new one. <laughs> So it's like the G Kids version is the version. It's really frustrating, right? But then, like the G Kids version doesn't have like the streamlined dub because, of course, you know, licensing for that would have been long gone. But right. It's just, it's just, it's one of those films that is kind of interesting from a so, production standpoint. Let me ask a question. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So I think we could save ourselves a lot of time if we ask to just one one important question. We're doing this for studio for Ghibli Fest, right? Right. Which version are they going to be fucking showing in the theater? <laughs> You're not wrong. That's the question, right? I well, have no it's G Kids, so it'll probably be based off the 2017 Blu-ray. Maybe, maybe, but will will it have the longer score? I don't know. So it's you know, it's a it's a coin toss. I don't know. I, I think I, theater shows a different one. <laughs> it, it's it, it was just fascinating. It depends. If you go into AMC, you get the original. If you go to Regal, you're gonna get the uh, <laughs> the orchestral. I it just it's one of those things where you just go, what, what, why, like, what do they feel it necessary to to reinvent the wheel here <laughs> it's just the localization like I, my head hurts just thinking about this whole localization problem yeah right now it's the context of how we're going to be talking about it yeah. uh I, hold up my said it was two hours was i wrong <laughs> <laughs> hold up it was only 90 minutes so what the fuck were y'all watching for the last 30 minutes <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. It was just, it's such an interesting, because I, it, Ghibli films, as we've discussed in other episodes, are really easy to get a lot of information about. Uh, Ghibli is extremely well covered, extremely well reported on everything that happens with it. So it's not, it's not particularly difficult to find information about it. The problem is, is then there's such a dearth of information that you, know, you go, wow, we've really gone down the rabbit hole. Um, that was a rabbit hole for me. I'm like, wait a minute, how many versions of this movie are there? Like, this, this is one movie, right? It's just the soundtrack? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> Yo, you did this rabbit hole, we haven't even gotten to the movie yet. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. No, we're we're minutes in and we're still right. just talking about the movie overall. You are right. We have if someone posts a comment that says that there's an underground version that has it in German and French at the same time, <laughs> I just, you know, yeah 
if, if you drink it with the Babadook in your house, then you get a different version. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be the Aussie version. <laughs> that that version comes song. with a free animal that'll kill you. Someone found a VHS in the corner of their grandma's basement. <laughs> and I'm going to throw, throw in a fun one for you. The Japanese okay. Laserdisc release of this movie included an English dub. Fuck. Fuck. I'm, okay. Fuck. <laughs> I saw <laughs> Lynette's eyes light up. <laughs> like, good luck. Like, Laser disc. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So this is set in a fictional late 19th century sort of European Germans kind of setting. And it follows the adventures of a boy and a girl who are trying to keep a powerful crystal away from the army, a group of secret agents, a family of pirates, all while searching for a legendary floating castle. Named the whore. Named the whore. And now we'll get to that. Thank you, Vic, for segueing beautifully into it. Oh, he was waiting for that. He was waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> so uh, Laputa, as it's called everywhere but North America and South America, uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky uh, had its name changed for Western release because it is spelled L-A-P-U-T-A, which presents to us Spanish-speaking members as Laputa, which means the whore. So, the castle in the sky. It's so castle, a whore. yeah, <laughs> castle in the sky was a whore. She got around. Like, wait, wait, there's uh, a whore in the castle that's in the sky. <laughs> you know, you know, there are some uh, giblets out there who went and took the time to get La Puta uh, <laughs> tattooed. God, I hope not. Look, and all I'm saying is, she's obsessed with crystals. She'd fit right. <laughs> <laughs> God, I still remember the those old like streamlined uh, flyers that you used to get in the mail. Yeah, and we were like, La Puta, what? What? Yep, <laughs> that can't yes. be its name. That's correct. We were like, what is this shit? Uh, <laughs> to be fair, uh, English dubs do pronounce it in such a way that it is not easily said as La Puta. They call it La Puta, which La Puta. is. Fine. It makes more. It makes perfect sense considering roots and origins of the name. Well, uh, in Japanese, it sounded like Laputa as well. It did. Yes. yes. So they turned the U into an E. La, they they sort of added like a Y. Laputa. Laputa. Like anyway. Laputa. Yeah, or P E W. Anyway, it's fine. I'm. Like I'm Lepew? Pew. Perfectly <laughs> fine with the pronunciation. It is just funny yeah. written out. So Get to yeah. Me every yeah, as a as a Hispanic, I write it out. I write it every time because I think it's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my inner twelve year old just starts giggling every single time I see the title. Every single time when it, when they pan over and it's that painting or the picture yeah. that his his uh, dad took and it just says La Puta. Like <laughs> I can see that whore. <laughs> <laughs> we can't help ourselves. I I got ever since I heard that. I'm reminded of something that happens in karaoke. And it's uh you never even call me by my name by Dave and Alan Cole. Right? So right. this is a crowd favorite, right? So anytime you guys you never even call me by my bitch slut whore. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I saw the food I was like, whore. <laughs> <laughs> There you the go. Cast. That's, That's great. It's, you just can't. It's how it is. All right, so let's let's dive into <laughs> let's dive into Castle in the Sky. Because if I say let's dive into La Puta, that's not how you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you know, always go by uh, what original name of the movie was going to be. Which is? <laughs> Which is Pazu and the Secret Castle in the Sky. There you go. We could go with that. <laughs> or we could go with Laputa. Let's go with Laputa. So, <laughs> um, so all right. This, this, let's talk about the movie. Um, Pazu is a, our, our lead. He's a very young boy, early teens, 13-ish, something like that. Um, the Disney dubs do represent him a little bit older. Like sort of like in his teens versus 
the original streamlined dub where the characters voiced a lot younger. Um, I get it. I get why they were trying to do that because later in the movie, they got a bunch of pirates pining after the girl, and the girl's like, yeah, 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 weird. Awkward. So, <laughs> so they, yeah, voice them up a little bit. Tattoo. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was the the dub I watched was very good. Uh, for what it is, it, it had some fun voices in there that I'll, I'll throw out now. Uh, Sheetha was played by Laura Cody, who was a, a character actor for Robotech. She played one of the Bridge Bunnies. Uh, she was really good. And Pazu was played by Barbara Goodson, who, if you are a voice actor fan, will know from a um, fuck ton of everything. But uh, the, the notable one that I thought was really funny was uh, she is Rita Repulsa from the Power Rangers. <laughs> that was that was the most fun credit I had. I saw on her list of accolades. She's the voice. She's the voice of Pazu. Yeah, yeah, and the voice of Rita. Right. So, yeah, oh. that's it. Just play back in your head. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pazu is a fucking moron. He's and, a ride or die. And he shows this very easily, very many times. <laughs> Um, I do love. I mean, he is like a fifteen-year-old kid, so. I love the opening scene with the with the sky pirates trying to capture, trying to capture Sheeta. I think that's great. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sheeta's insane, or climbing out a window on an airship, but you know, desperate times, I guess. <laughs> a foothold thing. So, it was fine. Yeah, you know, she crapped herself when she right? fell. Right, right. So Pazu. When she fell, well, the movie's over, I guess. So. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> they never found the castle in the sky. So she's... Roll credit. <laughs> <laughs> he finds her floating, and he, he, he rescues her. And then he... This fucking kid. Pazu. He has her put the necklace on, and then he goes full Assassin's Creed, and he just, like, dives off the edge of a building. <laughs> like, he's gonna be fine. <laughs> Pazu's a fucking moron. <laughs> Crashes. I've that scene twice because I thought it was the best ever. <laughs> Idiot. Also, it's like he jumped like no fear. He was like, yeah, this is going to work. <laughs> yeah, no test, no nothing. He saw it work. <laughs> he did. He saw, he yeah, but as far like, as he was concerned, it could have been gas. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Look, look he saw. Uh, Oh my gosh, she's actually coming from the sky. And <laughs> all, oh, so basically, like, you have the necklace, you're human. I mean, everything checked. I would have did the same thing. So if you got the cross, I would have been a moron too because scientific method dictates. That- but, but here's, here's the thing is, he saw her floating and coming down slowly. Why did he not wait until she came to the ground? Instead of trying to catch her like a Superman over a ledge, he was like, Oh, yeah, it's fine. You got this. Story's high. It's okay. I'll catch her. And then he just goes, Then he has this look like, Oh, shit, she's heavier than I thought. <laughs> almost, right? Almost dropped her. Let's not forget, he had to stop oh. having her to put down his pot of like meatballs because he forgot he had it. He's like, Oh, right. Let me put that down before I grab her. But you know what? That's a total teenager thing. He's like, I don't want to lose my lunch. Let me just save the girl. But then he, but then he almost drops her. Like he seriously, he just fool. Like he almost falls down. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, she's gonna die that way. She didn't die from a huge fall. She's gonna die because this stupid boy thought he could catch her. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, my note for that was Pazu has some strength. He was able to hold <laughs> up. <laughs> Full squat and then he activated his core. I'm telling that you. is a miner's son. You know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. is, that is a boy who has worked his life. Clearly, if he had been in Hunger Games, he would have been PETA and throws <laughs> him. <shit. laughs> also, something about that scene that like struck me later 
was he's like oh let me see your necklace and she just gives it yeah, to him right like, no big deal. and then like 20 minutes later she's like oh this was given to me by like my family and i was told never to give it to anyone and never take it off and i literally paused and went wait a minute and i rewind and i'm like she just gave it over like yeah. she didn't hesitate she was like oh you want to try it let me yeah try anyone it. that wanted to see it she's like here <laughs> like what you just said you just so this is this is one of the lines they changed in my dub that I thought was horribly brilliant and brilliantly horrible. He he does his Assassin's Creed dive off of the building, crashes through it, lands, busts his ass, and she asks if he's okay. And in the, the streamlined dub, he says, I'm built like a brick Muppet if Muppets were made of bricks. <laughs> huh? Okay. <laughs> Pazu's a fucking moron. So, now, in the Japanese version, he doesn't say anything remotely fucking close to that. They made him smart, smart for Dawson's Creed. They made him much smarter. <laughs> so, yeah. Any line is better than I'm built like a brick Muppet. All right? <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I, I had to, I bolded it in my notes because I'm like, this is the stupidest fucking improv line. Like, why did they think that worked? Anyway. You know what I mean? Probably why my sick didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, because of the different because of the different uh, dubs that we we did or whatever, we have different interpretations of Pazu's yeah. intelligence. Uh huh. Yeah. No, he's really dumb in my version. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For me, he's just a ride or die. He was like, anything she wants, I'm I'm down for it. Let's go. Oh my gosh. This like is you fell from the sky. You need you you want anything, you tell me what you want, I'll make it happen. That's I how he was. Your friend. I, it's, it's, it, it, this is going to be another interesting show for us because I thought that he was by far one of the best characters we've ever written. I love I loved Pazu. I want to be I want to be clear. I, even if he's a brick muppet, I loved Pazu. Because of exactly the same thing you guys are talking about, right? And that translates even in the streamlined dub that that he is he's ride or die, right? He's like, oh my god, this girl just floated from the sky, and even though I can't do it, I just tried, and I'm fine because I'm a brick muppet. I'm gonna <laughs> take care of this girl, and it's great. I I love his his eagerness to again, you know, this is another one of those Miyazaki things. His eagerness to be kind to this stranger, his eagerness to be helpful mm -hmm. to her, to to give everything he possibly can to her. It's, it's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's a great character. And the whole town. But he's fucking dumb. <laughs> I feel like... Dumb this, shit. All right. This is my inner uh, Andrea moment. Uh, but I feel like this is his take on the friend zone guy. Oh, he's he is definitely friend zoned. This kid is hard friend zoned. But it's... Oh, yeah. It's cool. I dig it. So, for those in the know, Laputa is a reference to the floating city from Gulliver's Travels. Uh, it is mentioned in the Japanese dialogue, but it is not mentioned mm -hmm. at all in either of the English dubs. They don't talk about the fact that it's Gulliver's Travels, even though visually they have like the book in there and they like page the book. They don't mm -hmm. talk about it, but it is mentioned in the Japanese version, which I thought was kind yes. of a strange decision to not include since. What are we just not learned people? No, never mind. Yeah, we're not learned people in the U.S. <laughs> um, nah, we pretty dumb. Now we get to. I want to talk about my favorite character in this whole anime, and that's Mama Dolan. Mom. Mama, Mama Dolan. Dolan. <laughs> Way she commands her boys to try and get this girl. She's brilliant. She's so well writ. She's so much fun. And she's such, you know what she is? And I know it's not intentional, but this is how I read her. She is a Southern mama. <laughs> like, she, that's, that's the way. I would have said she would have been the Midwest mother, you know, not Southern so much as much as uh, all of her kids are about to die from dysentery on the Oregon <laughs> Trail. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? All her kids were well fed, and she is willing to whack them if they need it. I mm -hmm. love I mean, all her. of them are about to. Go, uh, I felt I felt more midwestern, like uh, <laughs> like like riding out, 
Yeah, right yeah. And out, she was, yeah. I mean, very much outlaw. And and I, I loved I loved her. And you know, there's there's that scene later where she where uh, she is on the airship and she takes her into the room and you see the painting of a younger version of her on the wall. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I want that movie. <laughs> I want Sky Pirate Dola the movie. That's the fucking movie I want to see. I want to see how she met pops. Right? <laughs> and, Speaking of pops, okay, so something you notice in a bunch of the Ghibli movies? Yeah. When someone's got a big mustache, they've got a mustache. Oh, yeah, they don't hold back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and glasses. I have one problem with mine. You're not allowed to have any problem. And look, it's a big, once I tell you the problem, you guys are not going to be able to unsee it. So when they, when he returns back to his, uh, back to his cabin, after they recaptured Cheetah. Yeah. And he walks in and everybody's in the pirates are in there and they're eating, right? Yeah, sure. My one problem with Mama was that she was tearing to a steak like she had more teeth than was depicted. <laughs> the pirate. She's gumming that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she was <laughs> ripping that bitch off hey. with the one, two, all the spaces, and then she was going at it. I was like, Hey, maybe it was a really, really tender steak. Hey, you don't know. And, and maybe she's got the, the few teeth she's got left are the hardest teeth. <laughs> they're, they're, they're canine. They're, they point. They're, they're pointy. I, I don't know what I'm like, she, she's doing a little bit too much with that meat. At some point, you got to realize I can't bite into a loin of steak like that. I need a fork and knife. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, and she's another one of those characters. Actually, the whole pirate clan uh, is another mm-hmm. one of those Ghibli characters that the kinds of characters that I like from Ghibli, where at first they're an antagonist, but then they they become like the antiheroes, or the you know they help the heroes through to the end of the story. I, I love those kinds of characters. I love the way Ghibli does those kinds of characters. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and and Mama Dola is is top tier for me. I, just, I would. I would join her gang in a second. I'm I'm very glad yeah. that that was your only complaint about her because um oh. mother mother Dola is based off of Hayao Miyazaki's real mom. Um <laughs> awesome. <laughs> his uh one of the way that he describes like you know creating her and stuff is that she was strong willed because her his own mother had four boys and they were no match for her. Brian yes. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> you could have said that before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, you remember how Ghibli sent, you know, Disney, the giant katana, it's like no cuts? Yeah. He is Naki's going to send you one and say, what you say about my mama? Don't talk about my mama. <laughs> Keep my mom's name out your mouth. You couldn't have said that before? I think she saved it just for this. Oh man, I love I'm it. A, I, I, I just can't help but notice that everybody else was able to say something, and you just say nothing. But I say, "Mama, you gonna go ahead and drop it on me." I see where your love lies. <laughs> no, no one else is talking crap about Mama. I was about to drop it, then you're like, "I have a complaint about Mama." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> she knew." He pulled that out the back pocket. <laughs> hey, before you say that, let me tell you something. Before you say that, he could have saved. You. Could- yeah, no, I, I hear you. This is more fun knowing what a big fan of the show Miyazaki Sama is. Uh, Sama mm-hmm. is. It'll be great to hear his opinion on this. Absolutely. You know, this, he's a longtime listener, 100. contributor, in fact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he'll be he'll be very disheartened to hear about your. Opinions on his mama. Um, so this oh, is another man. this is another situation where the streamlined dub version I watched had really dumb versions of characters. Mama's boys are already a little dense. They are more dense in the streamlined dub. Like they say shit like like Captain is Mama. Like with that <laughs> level of inflection. And I'm just what? So they're chasing, they arrive at the farm, or not at the farm per se, they arrive to, to find Shita, and they're chasing Shita and, and Pazu into the city, where they run into 
to Pazu's boss, who is fucking amazing. And exactly. <laughs> he just fucking cop diesel. So great. And and then the, the pirate boys run into them and they talk like that to him. And we get to what I feel is probably the best version of conflict resolution ever. And that is the the shirt ripping, shirt bursting. Oh God. Shirt bursting punch off. <laughs> shirt bursting. <laughs> I feel like like that's how all conflict should be resolved. Like who can flex their shirt off? That's if you can, you've won. What, what I love is that the mom is in the background holding a frying pan with her arms crossed, right. like chilling off to the side. Yeah, Mama Boss said, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repair that. Right. <laughs> I'm not mending that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not mending that. Yep, yep. It was. I thought it was, it was funny, funny that Boss did that big ass flex with his big ass muscle. He had that small ass tattoo. <laughs> little tiny, little tiny heart. The tattoo was done before the muscles were in place. <laughs> oh shit! So oh, yeah, so it's good. great. And then this whole, a whole chase sequence. The 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 when they end up on the train and they, I loved that entire thing. That entire thing was was excellent. It was fun. It, felt it definitely was fun. fun. It was Did it feel like it was faster than what the vehicles were capable of? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. But. Mm-hmm. If you've ever like, been it, on an open thing, if you've ever been on an open cart doing like roughly thirty miles an hour, it feels like you're doing eighty. <laughs> have you ever sat in the back of a truck doing forty? Medic. Yeah. Look, there's no need to. Or bring you know, in the back of Richard's Jeep when he's doing eighty. There's no need to be. There's no need to bring up old shit. Mistakes are made. <laughs> now, to be fair, Vic, that's a false. Statement because we both know my Jeep could only do 40 if it were going downhill with a wind behind it and it was front weighted because it was just the engine could not do it. So, so we may have felt 40, but we never felt 80. <laughs> it just felt like I don't the gauge went that high, but I don't think it ever hit it. I don't know. Drove cross country with that bitch. I do not know how it was, you know, it was cross state. It was good. Anyway. Not neither here nor there. That whole scene is so much fun. I loved it. It felt very Lupin the Third, Castle Cogliostro, and kind of like with the kinetic way that they were doing it. It was I just it was great. Um, I thought cannon fire on that was so beautifully done. Oh yeah, like like the illustration of it was just superb when there when uh. You know, right when um, Pazu and Chita, they're falling, and then like, oh, let's, let's, let's watch to see what happens. Then it cuts to the over to the other side of it where the rest of the army is. They're like, hey, just want to remind you, we're trying to kill you. And they, <laughs> the cannon fire on there, I thought that was the best depiction of, like, it, it, it felt Macross like. For cannon fire, right? Yeah. That's the best way. I can get. No, I hear you. Like with the trails, and it's it's just good shit. That whole scene's great, and there's two or three really great action set pieces in this movie, and all of them deliver, especially for a film from the mid '80s. Now, yeah. Macross, do you remember Love? Is like gold standard for animated action in the '80s. This came out just a little bit after that, and it's Ghibli, so it's never going to be that same style. But what they it never do... it, let let's compare it to something else that was done around that same time, like say Vampire Hunter D, right? Yeah. Vampire Hunter D has nothing no. in regard to the action and just the, the just a pure brilliance of how they they animated it. No. It, it, it pales in compare- and I was like looking at it like damn was this done in like 2020 or t- at least 2000 no right. 1986 around the yeah. same time as as the movie you have yet to finish I mean Candy Girl this shit was coming out at the same time fuck out of here it is it is something else and it and it's <sighs> just Ghibli, man. And considering that this is their official first run out of the gate, you gotta give them even uh, more credit. Yeah, they had done mm-hmm. Nausicaa already, 
Nausicaa, a lot of Nausicaa translates into Lapida. Like, I mean, short of the obvious thing, like the fact that there's fox squirrels on Lapida. Uh huh, adorable. But like the outfits, the and sky the epic pirates wear. Mustaches and beards and. <laughs> yeah, the weapons that the people, the sky pirates use and outfits, all that shit is straight Valley of the Wind. Even the vehicles they ride feel like they could have been mm -hmm. in Nazi. The airship, the Goliath. I mean, all of that. So the DNA is there. And even though they'd already done it, it was nice to see them, I don't know, not reuse it, but like revision, like re, re envision it. Yeah, it's like it could be the same world at a different time. It does. It feels almost like a prequel to Nausicaa. Like, this is how the world was before we fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like knowing that that's the way, he, that's what, that's his intention as well. It's, I, Head cannon, I guess, but it, to me, that's how it read. I find out she does a, a Laputan princess, which is, we kind of could have guessed that princess. pretty quick. She's mm -hmm. the princess of, of Laputa. Laputa. Of the horse? She's a princess of horse. And, uh, <laughs> kind of like, thinking like a warrior princess, but she's a whore princess. Is she's it, a whore that princess. Was... Yeah, that's, that's the a thing. Warrior princess. <laughs> so, um, warrior? It, Here's where I want to ask a question. All right, so in your version of this movie, what did they call the crystal? Eternium, I think. Okay, cool. Ethereum? It's some, some, something weird, I forget. Okay. Yeah, cool. Ethereum. Right. Something like that. Cool, cool. Well, it was in a streamline. My version, it was just the levitation stone. That's the whole movie, what it was called. Wow, they just... Yeah. They, they, that, dude, that's why you don't have a right there. That's why you don't have a good respect for Pao Zhu. All you, <laughs> you, get the you know, but seriously, we're over here with like that scene when they're when they go back into the mines mm -hmm. and the Ethereum reacts with the other. Oh my god, that was fun. I was I love. I forgot the character's name. The old miner guy. He's fucking great. Uncle Poe or Uncle Rose. Yeah, he's Rose. awesome. I love the his whole his whole vibe. He's like talking to the stones because he's been down there so long. Like and and it's I've never I've I've never uh, met a miner, right? And I mean the kind who digs, not the kind who are young. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine that there's a sort of there's a culture that goes with the work, right? That there's uh, a type of personality and, and temperament and respect that comes with the work. Like I, I've seen movies and I've heard, you know, news stories about how you respect the mind, right? Because the mind is trying to kill you and how it's life or death down there. So it's it's an interesting thing to see a character represented like that. Like he's like he's, I don't know, the Ben the Ben Grimm of of the mind. Like he got marooned down there and he's <laughs> just been down there like I don't know, he was great. He was so fun. Uncle Palm. That was his name. Uncle Palm? Palm. P O M. Palm. There you go. Yeah. Uncle Palm. That sounds right. Two things about that. Yeah. In regards to not just not just Uncle Palm, but how that translates to generational in terms of positive. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a great job of, of the vocation aspect of positive. Yeah. This motherfucker was just cranking wrenches. Yeah, he, he knew exactly what to do. To, and then it wasn't just that he was at one point in time he was over there painting on mm -hmm. on, on on the uh, on the. I like that is military, not military, but just that craft that that crafter. Yeah, yeah, he's a um, a working class Joe's kid or an orphan. Yeah, of working class Joe's. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that the whole That's thing takes place in that sort of like era where child labor was sort of like he was just okay. Okay. Um, also, know how to translate it acro across multiple, like multiple trades. Mm -hmm. If you know how to do a wrench, you can do you 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 can repair the the the, the machinery in a mine or the machinery in the airplane. Right. Just, you know, potato, potato. Work in the airship because yeah, you, your knowledge base. But the second thing is, I think they gave us our first uh, exposure to like some type of radiation sickness. You mean with with uh, 
What's his name? Uncle Pom. Well, Uncle Pom. Pom. Sure. He was like, hey, put that away. It's mm-hmm. affecting me. I'm like, hey, buddy, you might want to get that checked out. That's how you right. get it. <laughs> you have to leave the line to go to a doctor. He's not going to do that. Might be a tumor, bro. Yeah, I mean, he's been, he's been you know, on the ground for God knows how long. Yeah, you know, glowing blue light probably just irked him. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, right. I, I'm I, pretty I, sure I, that's radiation right there. You know, <laughs> what the I, fuck do I know? <laughs> I don't. I don't disagree, but I, I do. I think that's. I think that was. Um, again, it's just a well. As with all Ghibli movies, I feel like we say it ad nauseum. They don't just make a character, right? You, every mm-hmm. character has has a lived in quality to their life. Like everybody's okay. in their environment, and it's it's never there's a background with a character. It's there's a character living in this world, and that's and that's what this what Uncle Palm. Right, got it, nailed it. That's Uncle very Pop, uh, Yeah, and and that's the difference with a lot of anime. Uh, a lot of anime, you, you get characters at settings, not characters in settings. And then, and in a Ghibli film, you get characters that live there. And I think that that's that, that's so true of this. Uh, and they, you can tell it's been their mo for decades now. Uncle Pom is just one of many. I will have to say, there's a level of trust. But I like that they took some time to actually, like, watch Pazu saying goodbye to his town. Like, when he flew away from it with the pirates, and then when he was flying back and was like, nah, let's just keep going. And they kept going. It Both times they took the time for him to, like, actually look over his town and, like, say goodbye. And take that in instead of him just being like, I'm off on another adventure, you know, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. Excellent stuff. Regardless of how dumb Pazu is in my version. It's still it's still excellent. I'm I'm doing it just for you, Brian. Um, he's, I, you're, 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 I, I can see it. <laughs> the one, you know, I normally am great with Ghibli in terms of how they depict scale. Sure. You know, my one problem with Pazu was that he ran really fast, based upon. <laughs> Doing me, that motherfucker was booking. And I was like, "That's not the you're not supposed. To, that's not that's not right." They they dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> what? He's not uh, allowed to be an Olympic class runner. Maybe he's just motivated. Was, man. Oh, and then there's fucking Road Runner. He's and... Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but we did talk about. His muscles are all to to rescue a whole ninety pound girl, right? From a full, yeah. Core squats, man. Kid does his work. Um, all right, so I kind of want to talk about I want to talk about the robots because um, I fucking love these robots. I love these robots a thousand times over. Um, I I love that she woke it up with a spell. I thought that was cool. I love that the robots are based on the the Max Fleischer Superman cartoons. I think that's it was just a great thing. You ever watch the old 1940s Max Fleischer mm-hmm. Superman cartoons? There's the one, the Mechanical Monsters episode, and where these robots they lumber around, and it's the same kind of thing that these the Ghibli ones do, and the arms get wings, and that's this that's totally. Yeah, it's it's just such a cool homage. I loved it. I was a big fan of the Fleischer cartoons as a kid, and uh, and seeing that translated into another anime was really cool. Hold on, hold on. I just yeah, I'm gonna play. Uh, just just for the record. Yeah. You you did say Superman cartoons, yeah, right? I did. Yeah, the old 1940s, the Max Fleischer Superman cartoons. Is that a dun, 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 dun. you know? Come on. Is that a prerequisite that we needed to watch before we watch this? No. <laughs> no. You just it's just an added bonus. Just it, dealing with me, man. It's just extra credit. Most the, the the whole reason I wanted to do it was to see if Andrea could find it for the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, they're great. It's they're you know, they're the old they're the old cartoons that used to run on the reels before movies. But if you've never seen a single Max Fleischer Superman cartoon, I highly encourage you to go. Just type in Superman Mechanical Monsters in YouTube. It's, it's great shit. 
It's, it's, it's just, I swear, you're, we watch these things completely different. <laughs> <laughs> it never seems to amaze me. And I'm, I'm, I don't know the opinion of what people have of us, you know, <laughs> but it feels like when it comes to just the, the, um, the scope of our knowledge, it's, we have Max Fleischer's Superman versus Mama's Teeth. <laughs> and you feel like a fucking asshole. <laughs> no way. No way, man. No way. So I will not fault anybody. Because, I mean, think about it, right? These car- Those car- cartoons predate us by a long mile. And they're going to predate anybody that watches it, watches uh, this movie this day and age by even longer miles. So to not have ever seen them is not a strike I put against anyone. It just so happens it's animation is my passion. It's something I love, and that's why I try it and absorb as much of it as I can. Here, I got one for you, Brian. Oh, here you go. I got one for you. You Uh-oh. can probably do this. So it's not confirmed, but there is a fun fan theory that in Futurama, Mom from Mom's Corporation and her three sons are based off Dola and her henchmen. Oh, God. And no, I can't you, unsee that. You can't unsee it, yeah. <laughs> so it's never been confirmed, but someone asked uh, Matt if he liked uh, Castle in the Sky, and he just responded with, yeah, I love that film. And and that was that's basically all that the fans needed to hear. To be like, oh, dude, they're totally based off the same people. I mean, it is pretty. I, I see it. I get it. Uh, yes. They're just, you know, apparently, what, what version did you watch, Rick? What, me? Streamline. Oh, apparently they're yeah. just the streamline version. Yeah, the streamline version. They are <laughs> dumb. They, Ingli- English is hard for the ones in the streamline dub. If you ever, and for those listening to the show, you, it's not like you can easily find the streamline dub. But if by some chance you are able to find it, uh-huh. I recommend it for a laugh. Because it is, it is, it is fascinating. Anyway, so yes, these robots. These robots are so great, right? They are very clearly inspired by the Max Fleischer cartoons. Uh, I don't know if he's ever said as much, but he would be lying out his ass if he said, I've never seen those. I don't know, because it's the same damn tricks. <laughs> and I love the castle escape scene where she wakes up the robot and he's her defender. And he goes all Iron Giant. It's so fucking great. I love it. Yes, and I love the laser effects. It's like you see the laser go zoom, and then Just moments that. later you see it like start to bubble up and then explode. And it's like I love that. Love that. Anytime shit. I see that in anime, I love it. And they did it in in, in Nausicaa, right? When the the god, the fire god demon, like spouts his laser beam, and it's that that delayed reaction where something blasted it at the speed of light and superheated it, and they get that a fraction of a second delay between. Mm-hmm. The, the everything around it react. It's so good. It's so anime laser, man. It's so fucking good. And that whole sequence is beautiful. And and the way he's the way Pazu is is almost taking control of the situation, even with with Mama Dola, and he's like telling her what to do. Basically, it was really great. And 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 the rescue of Shita on that, where he goes inverted on her little flying car. That's yeah, that whole scene is so great. It brings up a very good point that, you know, in regards to the whole rescue, this should have been Mama Dola's operation, you know, but instead, Pazu taking over. Again, you, we've already said that Pazu is anywhere between 13 to say, let's say 16. The conservative estimate, yes. Yeah. Right. I would say 12 to 14 at most. Right. Right. Yeah. And at this point, he has taken somebody who is clearly toothless. That means <laughs> this bitch of things. Ruthless. Ruthless and toothless. <laughs> what it is. Yeah, and it's great. It's such a... And she's getting... She's frustrated with him, right? Because she he keeps calling her Dola or Granny or whatever the fuck he's calling in whatever version mm-hmm. you've watched. And she keeps telling him to call her Captain. Like she tells all her boys. It's like she's adopted him immediately in this during this sequence and he's just as frustrating for her as any of her other boys but she can't help but mother him the same way she has all the rest of her boys and he mm-hmm. takes control of this situation to 
because his only concern is Sheeta. And and it's it's one of those endearing things about Mama Dola that makes her so great is that she's willing to go through it because she knows it means so much to him. I don't know. It's 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 such a good it's probably the highlight of the movie for me is that castle rescue scene. Uh and we didn't even get in the air ships by that point in the movies. <laughs> Um, but I was really into it. Uh, it's it's just ugh, it's so good. Anyway, they save them and they get to their airship. And <clears throat> sorry. And I, I love it because she takes them under her wing. She basically indoctrinates them into her crew and she gives she a job. Oh, and to work. Like, you're going to the galley and you're going to the crow's nest and and every, it's, it's all very uh, authentically piratey. It was like you don't get nobody rides for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of like Treasure Planet or a Treasure Island type of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So <laughs> my favorite was the boys eat seven meals a day. I was like, excuse me, how many meals do yeah, these boys see. eat? You want to get the shirt hey, off? Did you see the muscles on that? <laughs> that shirt dude? Off and wait, you got to eat seven meals a day. She cooks so much food. I'm like, I don't know if I want to work on the ship. It's a lot of work. <laughs> You gotta get your protein in. And it's it's cute and endearing the way that the boys sort of like see her as a possible, you know, like future mate. It's cute the way they kind of want to, they're flirtatious and helpful. When you don't factor in the fact that she's probably about 14, it's really cute. When you start factoring that bit in, you're gonna go, oh man, I don't know, guys. Like, mm. I get the shit together here. Apparently, you know, the pink MC Hammer pants just set off those dudes. I guess. Um, Which also, you know, really creepy that they were their mamas. Yeah, a little. And they saw mm -hmm. them and they were like, ooh. A little Oedipus complex there. A little Maybe. weird. Uh <laughs> Extra ew to the factor. If you think about it, that's kind of the way it happened in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, look, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fault it because it's cute. Like, it plays really cute. It does. The way each of them try to find a way to go in there to the kitchen to talk to her, the way that she ends up putting all of them to work. It's it's a really cute scene. When you don't deconstruct it, it's yes. a really cute scene. So let's let's not. Let's move on. <laughs> move on to the next scene. Oh. So I, we I need to do a laugh together. I think we need to do a collective laugh. That way we all... On board and just being funny. On the count of three, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so cute. Okay. Uh, and then, and, at all. We're cool. Uh, <laughs> no, I want to talk about Pops. If Pops isn't the human form of Kamaji the Boiler Man, then I have no respect for Ghibli. If Sheeta isn't the first right? draft of Kiki, then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Thank you. <laughs> Touche. I was just looking at the whole intro off and like, I think I have that. <laughs> That's it. Lapita is is uh, base beta versions of other characters. <laughs> oh man. But yes, I, I, I did want to talk about the Crows in that scene because I thought it was really, really sweet and cute the way that Mama Dola's eavesdropping on them and all the pirate boys are eavesdropping on them and i that's mm, there's just too much cuteness going on right now all you know right. all the pirates are jealous oh uh, yeah oh it was great and and i love how how he had such a read on dola and when he calls her out for it she's taken aback like dang he sees right through me it was <laughs> that's a character trait that I give Pazu credit for, even in the dumb version uh, from Streamline, is he he had a sense of good character. Like he knew that she was trustworthy and, and she was a good person. And it, it was great. I, I enjoyed the whole scene. It endeared me to Pazu more than all the other stupid things he had done <laughs> the entire movie. Oh, jeez. He does plenty of stupid stuff till before the end of the movie, too. So he does a, he does a lot. I don't talk about him. Because I want to get there, uh, but I do. I so they end up on Lapita. It's it's a great sequence, air combat and all that. They end up on the, on the castle in the sky, and you, we get more guardian robot action, which I loved. It, the uh, oh, the the whole the storm that they had to go through. Yeah, man. As somebody who's been through hurricanes, it was a little tricky. And, it, and right. is there a, it was a little too familiar. 
And they're like, we're going to yeah. go into the cloud. We're going to do what? <laughs> what, what, no, what? No, 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 no. History says that's a bad idea. At last I checked, we don't go into the dragon's nest. No, we're not We're not doing that. <laughs> the name does not sound enticing at all. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, we haven't heard about Ema in this, but sure. <laughs> Nevertheless, they go in. I do like he sees his father beckoning him forward. Like, we've got this, son. Come on. It's really cute. It's, so sweet. it's good stuff. The whole lightning channel. Don't want to call it a tunnel. It was a channel where yeah. the lightning started going forward, and they followed it through. Uh, yeah. Uh, hand uh, hand make my animated glory. Uh, mm -hmm. As is everything about this movie. And yeah, so they end up they end up on Lapita. They we get the the bird loving robot, which is great. I love the bird loving robot. I love that he's lumbering across, and they're they're like, oh, he's gonna bust our ship. We are so hosed. And then there you go. He's just saving the birds. Yeah, nice little. He's bird. just moving it out of the way. It's great. With his little. Ding -ding -ding. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, and one of the things I I loved about Lapita itself, the setting. Uh, is how much it invokes a lot of the themes that Miyazaki puts in his movies. The balance of things. You learn about the balance of things through Shita as well. Uh, the whole city is this balance of nature and technology. Of, of a whole thing is built around this giant core tree. Uh, I loved that so very much. Then you also learn through... What's that? It felt like it was the pre predecessor for Avatar. Right. <laughs> it, it wouldn't surprise me. You know what I mean? Knowing that Cameron's an, av uh, an animation fan. Yeah. Um, not not the entire portion of it, but just exactly how strong the root. And you see, that's a strong-ass tree. Yeah. Right. And I... I and it's mirrored in, in Sheeta's life, too, right? Because you learn... She knows these spells to to control the stone around her neck. And she tells Pazu that she had to learn the bad ones to be able to do the good ones because there had to be balance. Mm -hmm. And sort of just talks to the whole idea of, of like Lapida itself, a balance of technology and nature coexisting and creating this utopia. Uh, a fallen utopia, unfortunately, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but even her spells had to be that way. And it's that's sort of just par for the course for him. Everything about his, his more powerful movies, his more popular films, there's always uh, themes about balancing life with nature. And and this okay. does that as well. Uh, it's a little more subverted, but it's there. Uh, and I, I, I just I respect the hell out of that. I love it. And I wish we all did that a little bit more. Andrea, you said the name of Mamadola's ship was the Tiger Moth? Correct. Right. The Tiger in, Moth? Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the streamlined dub, they call the ship out. Did they do that in your version? No. So he, he, Pazu calls it the Tiger Moth when he finds that they've been captured by the soldiers on Lapita. He says, the Tiger Moth made it through. And I Moth. Right, yes. like okay. yeah, like the insect, uh, the butterfly's dark cousin. <laughs> I, think, I think I saw it mentioned once, but that's it. Yeah, I remember, I watched this movie a bunch of times, different ways. I know one time they called it that, and yeah. I was like, "That's weird." And then reading books and stuff like that, I, I that's what it's called. And I was like, "They did not say that in the most recent version that I watched. They didn't even mention it." Yeah. So in, yeah, in the streamline dub, it is called out by name, but only in that one instance. Uh, and then this gets to uh, me criticizing Pazu some more. Sorry, <laughs> it's coming. He he tries to again with the hardcore parkour. Decides he's gonna leap to this pillar that's hanging off thirty thousand feet in the air. <laughs> Easy, yeah. <laughs> the, again with his Assassin's Creed uh, training. Yeah. Just his obsession mm -hmm. with Assassin's Creed. Don't give kids video games, people. <laughs> and he just, the whole thing crumbles out from under him. And I was just like, oh my god, this kid. <laughs> so, so can we go from, he's a moron to he's a really strong moron? Oh, he's a very oh, strong, strong, very strong moron. Mm -hmm. 
And he's sneaking around. He's sneaking around the city. And for some reason, and I mean, this is some hardcore military here. They are firing at these children. They are shooting firearms at these kids. At no we point, haven't talked about. We we <laughs> haven't addressed. Yeah. We haven't addressed about exactly how little fucks they gave in regards to these kids. Not a one. <laughs> so Not a they one. They pistol with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pirates. They shot. Him. They shot they, him in the face. <laughs> Dude, that's what I was gonna talk about. <laughs> All right, so he's he's getting shot at. So he climbs into a cubby hole. They capture Sheeta or Muska, Muska, how do I don't know pronounce? He captures Sheeta, and then he had just been fired upon. And our our lovable strong moron Pazu sticks his whole body outside the hole. He was just taking fire. Sticks his whole body out the hole. He's like Sheeta gets shot in the damn face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, dude, you just got shot at. We're just getting shot at. It's cheating, man. Ride or die. And they then, just gives him a dirty look right after. And then the soldiers throw a damn grenade in the hole. <laughs> go kill this kid. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give up. They're like, oh, we just shot him in the face, but he's got to go. He's yeah. got nothing left. He's on this little tiny thing right below us. Let's, let's drop a grenade anyways. An amazing disregard for human life. <laughs> Just amazing disregard. And, we so, don't even know whose army we are. They are from. Right. They don't establish any political alignments or any, you know, uh, cult you know, country. country yeah, nothing like that. It's just these are some soldiers. They work for the Humpty Dumpty General, and and the Humpty Dumpty General's clearly taking orders from Muska. And and you're like, cool. Whatever country this is, they're pretty horrible. It's just... I think I think there, there there's something to be said for the lack of facial hair that he was able to have and the lack of respect that he had for him. Oh. However, the people that had the full beards, we were like, you know what? Those are the people that we're rooting for. I have it on good authority <laughs> that people with beards are are kinder souls and pigtails. Yeah, and pigtails, very important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hate when they get shot off. Oh man! So that's I, my note for that. You ready? My note for that is. Haircut by Smith and Wesson Salons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big tail gone. I was like, damn. That's impressive. And that, and that was a close cut. I'm sitting there yeah. going, are you are you sure she still has an ear? I don't know right? if she has an ear. <laughs> she might not have an ear. I'm going to to do the other side. And it's just like, all right, the those are the same bullets that shot Pazu in the face. Yeah, and they cut her hair. No split ends, though. There were no split ends. Oh, that was a beautiful haircut. Yeah, yeah it was a perfect haircut. Smith and Weston salons, they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Point where we need to make sure we put in there. Uh, hey, Andrea, make sure we put in there. Please don't try to cut your hair with bullets. <laughs> Uh, as a giant flashing yeah, that, 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 that we are not ever suggesting that that's the, the, the appropriate way to cut hair. That is, it is not. It is, yeah. It's going to be a Do not try this at home. The characters in Ghibli movies are professionals. That's right. <laughs> yes. All characters in animations are professionals. Please do not try at home. So I got to right, ask right. you guys, uh, because I, I did watch the Streamline dub, as we discussed, but I also watched it with the subtitles on to sort of get context for things that were dramatically changed. Like, I never would have been able to figure out the Muppet line, right? <laughs> anyway, they uh, there's this bit where they throw the grenade into the hole after uh, Pazu to try and kill him, blow him the hell up. <laughs> and it seems like there was a fart joke there. Is there a fart joke? Because there was no f- oh yeah there was she was like it wasn't me right so in the subtitles oh, it yeah. wasn't me she says because of course this puff of cloud comes up from <laughs> under her, her butt and they changed that for my dub and I was like that was a perfectly reasonable moment to use a fart joke and you didn't use it that was it. a good fart joke it was a good fart. it was a good fart joke and they instead they just had her say I hate soldiers and I was like well this is stupid like <laughs> you had a perfectly good fart joke. Um, and I just I noticed the subtitles are different there. So I wanted to confirm. Okay, so it was a fart joke. I remember it yeah. now. It was pretty funny. All right, cool. <laughs> it's it's a good joke. So And then Pazu shows up right in between her legs. 
Right, yes, positive shows up between the legs. I mean, it's I, you know, what am I gonna say? Um. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. I was gonna say. Is, oh gosh. Right. So I gotta admit, um, positive didn't. I don't know. Smell nothing decrepit down there when he. <laughs> Well like, aged. She has not changed <laughs> those boomers in so long. And, and that's the first thing. It, it's like right there. You see an eye, you see a nose. Come on, man. It's always the so here's the thing. They are a puta, and, and he shows up right between her legs. We're going to laugh. We're going to laugh and move on. <laughs> move on. Man. Uh, so now I want to talk a little bit about Muska. This, yeah. Muska starts out as just a business schlock guy. I don't know. He, he's politi- I don't know. At first I thought he was like a politician, and then I was like, oh, he's like a spy. And he's not like a spy. He's like the guy controlling the whole military, which is kind of thing. interesting. But then he is in when he reaches Laputa, he goes full evil and full dumb all at the same time. So... I love the way he entices all the soldiers into a room only to, to like, just open the floor. Like, that was some Loki-level shit right there. Mm-hmm. Just like, before, before it happened, what did he do? Haunted the shit out of him. Isn't that the... That was right be- before that is the orbital beam cannon, right? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. shows off... Right. He shows off his weapon of mass destruction. So that whole bit where the hologram comes through the floor and everything, it made me think of the Arthur C. Clarke quote, that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I'm like, this is that right here is a perfect mm-hmm. example of that line of thinking. Like he's mm-hmm. like, this hologram has phased through the floor. He's talking smack. He shows off what is, of course, an orbital beam cannon. Anime trope number 803. <laughs> this, 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 <laughs> uh, his first Ghibli's we're basic now. You know, this we was, also did the orbital beam cannon. I mean, it was the eighties <laughs> and that's where all the really great orbital beam cannons came from. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we got to give them a little, they were bit. born in the eighties. <laughs> it was also their first one. Let them have it. Right. They had to come out with a bang. So they, they had Laputa with an orbital beam cannon. <laughs> so <laughs> Before I had a cannon. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, he does some Loki-level shit. He, he blows up, show, shows off his weapon of mass destruction, and then just opens the floor and drops the entire military out, which was awesomely evil. Uh, and I, I respected him. I was like, all right, I get it. You do not care. And then he does this thing that I take issue with. He's got the whole... He's, he's won, right? He's got this whole situation in, in his hand. And... Pazu, a 13 to 14 year old boy, rolls in with what is arguably a grenade launcher. I don't know. And potato gun. T- right? But then he <laughs> it looked, looked like a potato gun. It, it did, but you see the size of the shells that he put into that thing? <laughs> He's walking around with a large anti tank weapon it's and finding a point blank to make a hole in the wall for him to crawl through. It's, it's a 50 caliber blunderbuss, is this thing. And he's. And he's got this weapon, and 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 Muska agrees to give him three minutes to talk Shita. And I'm just like, that is Muska's a fucking moron. He's a fucking moron. Yep. Like him and Pazu could be brothers. They might be related because they're both fucking morons. <laughs> yeah. You've won. You've got it. Oh, you can have three minutes. I'm sorry, what? Three three minutes to plot. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for that. He got cocky. He thought there's no way they could overpower me. They're two children. And 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 we're gonna get to this now. This is the moment, right? This is the moment where he gets with her, and they they hold hands, have the little moment. They agree to say the spell of destruction. I take oh. issue. I take issue with this moment. It's I, a beautiful I, moment. I take issue with it. They both hold out the stone, and they say the spell of destruction. Alus. I take issue with the fact that the spell of destruction is one word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I take issue with it because 
Apparently, you have to recite the entire goddamn Gettysburg Address to turn on a robot. I I looked it up. It's Viete la pu la, la tu paretos ulos. I uh, listen. By the time I'm done reading this, the movie's over. So if it takes that long just to wake up a defender, why one word's gonna destroy your whole civilization? Like they really didn't think that through. Like all the four. <laughs> When did you tell Pazu that word? Right, yeah. And when, when did she tell Pazu that word? Because if she was in possession of the crystal and she says it, then that's it, right? Game over. It's like saying Shazam mm-hmm. when you're in the middle of a fight. You don't do that because you change. So doing the, telling him the word, I don't know. I don't know when she told him the word. Because if she had the crystal and she said the word, the spell should have been any. That's the point. I take issue with this moment. It's a beautiful moment. It's, it's awesome. It's really great. And they... It's so well done, but it took issue with the fact that it was a one-word spell of destruction, the fact that he suddenly knew it somehow, and they hadn't established where he'd picked that up. Because if the other spells were any indicator, if she was going to try and teach him the spell in those three minutes, it would have been killed. Because mm-hmm. I wrote the spell down, and I still don't know how to say it. And that was <laughs> hours ago. So, so if it was, it, it had to be one word because it's the only thing my favorite moron could remember. But <laughs> this, but this, I just one word. Again, it's an awesome moment. But shut up, man! Come on. Look, my problem is they went through all this effort to find this place. Spend maybe what? two, maybe four hours tops in this place that they've searched for so, for so long. Sure. And we're going to... I mean, I, yeah, I get it. Like, it's this kid's... It's Pazu's, like, reason to live kind of thing. But, I mean, he obviously chose her. You know, I mean, over the idea of proving his father right. That's kind of the point, is he's choosing, choosing Sheeta over that. Which I, I respect. He's 13, 14, he's a moron. But I respect He his chose love. Laputa over... No, he chose her. He chose Shita over Laputa. So, credit where credit's due. Yeah, yeah, he I chose Laputa over, over Laputa. <laughs> I, I, I loved the moment. I really did. I loved that moment. It was a beautiful moment. But when, Dumb, when I but heard beautiful. him say one word, I was like, that is the stupidest fucking spell I have ever heard. Like that is that is the one two three four five of shield combinations. Oh my god, that's the same <laughs> code on my briefcase. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. I took issue with it, but it was it was an awesome moment. It was beautiful. I loved the whole thing, and then the whole end credit sequence with the with Lapita's tree, like just kind of floating up there. It was great. It's beautiful. This movie's great. An excellent movie. Look. You basically said, hey, just letting you know right now, this whole thing is going away. <laughs> now you see it? Now you know. Bye. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that everybody was able to see the blue light, but now the blue light's gone away, and the tree is going to the one place where it can't survive, clearly upper atmosphere, because there's no <laughs> oxygen. Outer space. It outer went to space. outer space. Yeah, all the little animals and everything else are going to die. All right, yeah. the birds that we just rescued, Done. the birds are gonna die. Yeah. Everything that's on this place is now <laughs> dead. Destroyed. Except the robots. Yeah. They're just gonna just sit there and do nothing. The robots. Or the one that was still moving. One, the one robot. Oh no, there were more. But yeah, the robot that's left. Very bored. Hundred percent. Yeah, but the whole, the, the, it, everything that we just saved is now dead. The, the tree. Yeah. There's nothing. Photosynthesis is not going to happen. In- <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no you're not wrong again it was it's it's a dark ending when you really deconstruct it it's a beautiful oh, ending sure. because he chose love but it's a dark ending like if you think about it on a broader scale like um, they they go through great efforts to show you what was remain what remained after the uh the stone and the technology falls away. The only thing you have is this one blue crystal, this giant, pure
pure rock of Ethereum mm -hmm. and the tree that has been sustained by this to the point of its roots. And we're just going to chuck it into the atmosphere. Yeah. A little bit of the building left. Yeah, there the were grave. some. I mean, not what they're going to do. Yeah, everything that was technically above ground. <laughs> right. Yeah, the garden. Like the garden areas that were closest to the trunk of the tree. They survived. But everything else is, I mean. So, yeah, no, it's it's an interesting, when you really think about the ending, it's, it's sort of an interesting thing. But I, again, beautiful. I loved it. I loved this movie. And I'm not the only one. This movie is beloved uh, to an extreme degree. It's inspired so many different anime, so many movies, so many artists, so many. It this is a, uh, it's part of Japan's cultural zeitgeist, right? Like it's it's like a rite of passage for them. You, you see this movie. Uh, over here, hell, a lot of people don't even know it exists, uh, which is a shame. Uh, so I hope yeah, those people suck. Take a friend to go. Take someone who's never seen it. Check it out in Ghibli Fest. Go enjoy it. This movie's. Amazing. Come back and tell us what version was playing. Yes, come back and tell us which version it was. All right, Brian, I have a mindless musing for you that I think you'll appreciate. How many Ghibli films can say that they inspired a hentai? <laughs> Brian's eyebrows. Just oh, like I'm in. So, <laughs> so this film inspired 1988's uh, Balthus, which Alus. Balthus, I think you see where they're going there. Uh, Tia's Radiance. What's it's called Balthus, Balthus Tia's Radiance. Tia's Radiance. It is very clearly a homage, a hentai homage to Castle in the Sky. The designs and the settings are the same. The two main characters are similar, just older. Um, it's got a lot of that Castle in the Sky vibe, the Future Boy Conan vibe. And what's interesting about this that I found out is it is rumored that several Studio Ghibli staff members participated in the making of it and that <laughs> they were fired for it. Ooh. So according to a book... When is this video going to be part of Ghibli Fest? <laughs> <laughs> according to a book called Recommend Hayao Miyazaki by Juzo Isaka, he stated that it is said that Ghibli cut the staff who participated in the making of Althus Tia's Radiance. Fascinating, right? When do we plan on uh, reviewing this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's an extra episode. Ghibli Fest Plus. <laughs> That's right. I mean, Ghibli if we Fest get Attack Punisher, dark. we need to do this one. And I, and I have, I have a, a link for the, the book that the source was, so I can give it to you for the show notes. It's, I, when I found this out, I was like, this is wild. So I had to go down the rabbit hole and find the book. Yeah, apparently it's it was so. I mean, it it's like it's like a, an eighteen plus sequel to Laputa. I mean, it's the best way to describe it. Really, the characters look like older versions of those characters. The whole city, it's like an old mining town kind of thing. Like everything about it, the beats are there, the styles there. It's it's pretty wild. All right, so we've run a nice long episode here. I really would love to get everybody's final thoughts on Castle in the Sky. So let's start with Vic. Vic, you get to go first this time. Talk to me about Castle in the Sky and uh, how you think it is. Okay, besides, you know, the standard, you know, we grew up Latin household. So see, La Puta, we got just giggling like little children every single time. Even now, every time I see the title, I see it, it's like, hey. <laughs> but I loved it. I mean, it was literally my first time actually watching it. Was it really? So. Yes. Wow, that's usually a, 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 a trait we reserve for Lynette. I know. <laughs> but I get to announce first that, you know, I actually never watched this until now. All and right. I kind of hate myself for not watching it earlier. I hear you. Definitely worth, worth the watch. And if it still hasn't aired for Ghibli Fest, it should be really soon. And you guys should go watch it. Um, all right, cool. Let's... Let, let's go over to Lynette. Lynette, was this your first time seeing Castle in the Sky as well? Yes, it was. Oh, my say, gosh. Yes, I have to say I'm also kind of ashamed that I didn't watch it. I'm like, really? You know, I did Howl's Moving Castle. Should have stuck with the castle theme and watched this one, too, but I did not. So, but I enjoyed it. It was very, it was fun. 
Awesome. Yeah. It's, now, Brian, you as well? Were you also on this party? First time? First time listener? Damn. First time? Rhea, you and I are the only vets here. I was here. just about to say, bro. Wow. We're not, the, we're not the majority. This is weird. Man. <laughs> All right. You know, I love that, though. I love that we got a bunch of fresh eyes on this movie. This is great. So, you, overall, actually, go for it. One of my fresh thoughts was it really felt like Pazu and and uh, Shita kind of had a Han Solo and Leia vibe going with them. I could see that. Agreed. You know, yeah. that whole nerf herder. I mean, they didn't they didn't have any antagonistic, but he was really gung ho for saving his princess, and it felt like Han Solo moment to him you know if anything it felt like this was um it had the same type of scope as like uh like something from indiana jones or or maybe not indiana jones but definitely like hook it had that same gravitas with it where you have the military looking for something that was sacred Mm -hmm. you know um the whole plot twist of finding out he's actually from La Puta as well. It's La Puta Royal. I could have with that because that means you you knew this you could have known the spell from the beginning. You had to wait for her to say the spell. <laughs> and come to find out you knew any even more spells. <laughs> but y'all's family didn't know how to find a bitch. So come on. Y- y'all, right. it, it, yeah. But that being said, I thought it was a really good ep- I thought it was a really great show. Probably one of my favorites. Rock on. Yeah, like at I, one point, I even just stopped taking notes entirely. I was like, I was really enjoying it that much. That's good. I'm so glad, guys. This is uh, this has been a long time favorite for me. Uh, I've always enjoyed it because I, I also enjoyed Nausicaa, and they're kind of like these feel like siblings to me, just because design wise, aesthetic wise, like there's a lot there that they they kind of live in the same world. So for me, I've always enjoyed it, especially the fox squirrels. The Teto fox squirrel is. I fucking love that animal. Like, I always wanted one as a kid, and to see, like, there was a lot of them on this castle was really cool. Man, I'm, I'm really glad. That fox squirrel, it's like, it's a predecessor to a, to a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it's a... It's, <laughs> it's an Eevee evolution. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it would... You know what? I'll put good money that they were probably inspired by that character, by that creature. I'm just saying... It wouldn't surprise me, considering, again, how immensely popular with Japanese culture the Laputa is. Wouldn't surprise me. All right, I'll turn it over to my uh, amigo executive producer here, Andrea. Andrea, I know this isn't your first time with Castle in the Sky, so yeah. but lay it on us. Uh, how do you feel about it now? Well, obviously grew up with it. Uh, adore it. Uh, loved it a lot growing up. Uh, now that I'm older and re-watching it again, it makes me laugh because it's very true. It's not a very popular film over here. And I'm not really sure why because it hits all of the points that we all want. And, like, you guys, first-time watchers, you fell in love with it. And so did I. Every time I watch it, it's always fun to just jump in and, like, you notice new things. Like, for example, the mom thing that I brought up about Futurama, I didn't even put two and two together until I was watching it this time. For the podcast, I was watching it, and it was when they go to get Pazu, you know, right after they kidnap Sheeta again, and she's sitting there, she's eating, and in the dub that I watched, one of the sons, like, takes the money out of Pazu's pocket, and he's like, hey, mom, look what I found, can I keep it? And she's like, no, put that back, and, like, yelled at him, and I started laughing, because I was like, that reminds me of Futurama, and then I was like, wait a minute, and I went down a rabbit hole and found all of that information out. So it's like, even watching it years later, I still pick up on new things. And I love that about Ghibli. Where did they get the lobster from? The lobster? <laughs> yeah, the fucking lobster during that scene. Where did they get it <laughs> They're probably it's obvious. They, 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 totally. They, yeah. they fly in the sky. They can fish from there. It's yeah. fine. Uh, they probably, you know, robbed a, a rich airship and stole their food. Yeah, took it out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah, they did in the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's always fun. You get to see it and then you get to realize that it actually inspired a bunch of stuff and it, it came from a bunch of things and it's something that we don't really know that well. 
So it's a nice difference from like My Neighbor Totoro, House Moving Castle, where a lot of people know that film, especially Spirited Away. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that one because it played late night. So Castle in the Sky is one of those fun ones that you don't know about. And then when you watch it, you're like, why didn't I watch this before? Like it's finding a hidden treasure. And Yeah, that's when you get mad at all your friends for not telling you to watch it sooner. Exactly. <laughs> so Castle in the Sky. Damn it, Rick. Damn it, Andrea. <laughs> Hey, hey, man. Hey, I thought you knew. I thought you knew. <laughs> but yeah, it's a hidden treasure, much like La Puta. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm going to bounce off of that and sort of echo Brian's vibe. Uh, every time I watch this, I get a like an, an adventure Raiders of the Lost Ark vibe off of it. Like they're Goonies, you know, like just that kind of like fun, timely adventure film. And that's what this reads to me every time I watch it. Uh, and I, you know, I half expected Muska to just be a Nazi. I mean, <laughs> you know, and not that he wasn't, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it hits a lot of those same kind of story beats as all the really, just really great fun adventure films. And to me, this, that's what this movie is. And it's funny because this movie, I've seen it a bunch of times, but it, it always, it, it always tends to go to the back burner of my brain. And then I, I come back to it to watch it again, and I go, oh, yeah, I fucking love this movie. Why am I not watching this movie more? And maybe that's just a problem with it. I don't know. But I, I don't see it as a problem. I think it's it's great because it's you get this, you get to re-experience it every time. You remember you loved it. Like everyone here, with, with all Ghibli movies, really, except for a handful, do check it out. It's should be we're going to try our best to get released right around the time it airs for ghibli fest so it's a great opportunity for you to go to the movie theaters and enjoy it so I, I highly recommend it well i think it's going to do it for us we ran a bit long in this one as we tend to do when we really really like something so uh that's going to be our show for today so until next time keep calm and alus you've just been privy to the mindless midlife musings of the anime nerd presented by geek grotto Follow the podcast on Twitter at Geek Grotto. For show notes and corrections or for general geeky fun, you can visit our website at geek-grotto.com. If you would like to sponsor the show, you can do so on the podcast's Red Circle host site, redcircle.com slash shows slash M-M-M-A-N. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, please like, follow, and subscribe.